serious. Hey guys, hope you're going well. I'm sure you noticed that we are now living through peak TV era, the sheer volume of a really great high quality, high production value like TV series we have churning out right now is just insane. Like the sheer volume of it is crazy to even comprehend. There used to only be like a handful of core, really significant shows that everyone was watching and now that is no longer the case. It's not, are you watching insert popular TV show here? It's, have you heard of insert popular TV show here? Because there is so much going on. It's just hard to keep up with the new stuff coming out. It's actually such a crazy thing that none of my friends in real life are watching the same shows that I am at the same time, either because they're not subscribed to that service or they don't have this streaming platform or whatever the case may be but I just find that so crazy. Anyway, I digress. The reason I wanted to chat with you today was to let you know some of the TV that I have been watching lately, the brand new TV that's just begun airing in the last few months that's either completed its first season or is still in the process of airing. Here is my little disclaimer before we dive right in that for the most part, I've seen most of the episodes uh, in the shows that I'm mentioning, but here and there, I've probably only seen maybe two to four episodes just for the sheer purpose of getting through the volume of content and hours that I need to watch in order to put this video together. So if you want to step up your TV game and avoid some serious TV FOMO, then in no particular order, here are the series that you need to add to your list immediately. We are starting off with the most badass femme assassin thriller. It is Killing Eve. This takes the well-trodden idea of cat and mouse, you know, catch a killer genre with our lead character in a top government organization, only two steps behind the serial killer leaving a trail of bodies across Europe. We've seen this story done so many times in so many movies, but we've never seen it done with two female leads. I know, right? Shocking. But this is a female spin on a very familiar genre that is so delightful, that is so witty, that is so like jam packed with complicated emotionality, like really well-rounded, complex, like female characters. Sandra Oh stars as Eve Palastri, who develops this unhealthy like obsession with the female assassin called Villanelle, played by Jodie Comer. And Sandra Oh, can I just say, this is such an awesome role for her. It is so nice to see uh, a character like this that is a little bit more mature, that brings a whole new level of like layers and emotional stakes to a story like this. This show is developed by Phoebe Waller-Bridge who did the UK dark comedy Fleabag. And if you've seen that show, then you know that she does these like hard punch in the face, no apologies, complicated female characters really so well. This is so much assassin intrigue and fun. So next up, Bill Hader, who was a really excellent comedian, has his new show on HBO called Barry, which I was really interested to see where he stars as an ex-Marine hitman who goes out to Hollywood for a job and ends up through a series of awkward and black comedy circumstances, joining the LA acting scene and on his path to becoming yet another struggling Hollywood actor. Actor. This subject matter touches very close to my heart because I was all about the Hollywood acting scene. I went out there for a couple of years to pursue production. My boyfriend at the time was an actor, so all my friends were actors and I was right up in that struggling actor scene where everyone would work kids parties or be universal tour guides during the day and go to acting schools and theater productions at night. The struggle is real and oh, so brutal for anyone trying to chase that Hollywood dream. I can't even begin. Bill Hader's Barry is so awkward and endearing as he just gets swept up into this acting culture and his uh, acting coach is played by Henry Winkler. It's pretty funny. It's a really easy show to watch and really pokes a lot of genuine fun at the ludicrousness of the Hollywood acting scene in general. So it's an easy watch this one. I really enjoyed it. And oh my God, the memories, the, the flashback memories I get when watching this, like it's all true. Every single character, except the hitman, obviously, I was friends with when I was out there, like 
they're they're all there they're still there they're still struggling it's 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 tough here is the only mini series of this list today and it is with the esteemed actor benedict cumberbatch in his tv pet project patrick melrose the show is based on the semi-autobiographical novels about britain's upper class by edward st alban and follows cumberbatch on his drug addicted extremely wealthy but isolated and damaged character Patrick Melrose and the series portions out these chapters of his life from his childhood his abusive childhood in the 1960s to the drug and fueled state he gets himself in the 1980s and kind of bounces itself around these sections of his life the thing about this series is that each one hour episode takes on a very different tone and vibe and it's really beautiful to see the way that this production unfolds, it's like a five hour movie, only that a movie couldn't chapter and serve out these portions in an episodic setting the way that this does. And Cumberbatch is the linking thread between these episodes and he is just, oh, he's just so good. If you enjoyed him in Sherlock or as Sherlock Holmes, then you'll see a lot of the similar neuroses brought to his character in Patrick Melrose, but like extrapolated on extreme drug fueled level. It, it's really devastating, but the show kind of finds this harmony to it. So it's dark, but it doesn't dwell. And I feel if this was a 10 part Netflix series, it would be too much. But for a short mini series, five part series, it's the perfect recipe for this dark and really sharp story about addiction. First Benedict Cumberbatch, can he do nothing wrong? Now, now, you guys know that I love me some historical fiction. And here we have AMC's The Terror, which is the story of these two ships that set sail from England in the hopes of charting out a new trading route through the Arctic. And then the winter blows through and the ships become frozen like frozen solid. And apart from a few flashes back to the home life going on in England, there is just ice in this story, just ice as far as the eye can see. The Terror is executive produced by Ridley Scott and stars Jared Harris, who I've only ever really seen do guest roles. So it's pretty cool to see him do a leading role in a series like this. I think he's really great. And as Captain Francis of the HMS Erebus alongside the other ship, the HMS Terror, we get to follow their doomed voyage. There's a lot of heavy talking, a lot of long conversations in this one. I felt like it padded out a lot over the 10 part series. It would have done nicer in a bit shorter, like maybe even six, eight episodes would have been solid for it. But I did quite like this one. There wasn't as much of a horror element as I thought there was going to be. There are injections of a little bit of violence and horror, especially as the men start to get picked off one by one by an unknown, vicious predator who begins stalking the ships as they're landlocked in the ice. But as their situation goes from bad to worse, that's where the interest sort of started to wane for me, especially towards the latter end of the series. Nevertheless, this is a very interesting depiction of how harsh life was back before a time when the white man had conquered every inch of the globe and there were still places he hadn't yet been. Let's finish this off with my most anticipated TV series of the whole Whole year. This is the one I was most looking forward to. It is called Yellowstone and that is because it is executive produced, created, co-written and directed by my directing crush Taylor Sheridan who is the man behind Sicario which he wrote and the second one too and he wrote and directed Hell or High Water along with Wind River and this is definitely his TV series, Baby. The 10 part series Yellowstone starring Kevin Costner has only just premiered a couple of weeks ago. So there are only two, maybe three episodes that have so far aired. The show is set in rural Montana on a family ranch run by the Dutton family and they are old money and the ranch is gigantic run by Kevin Costner and his now adult kids. And they're basically trying to ward off people encroaching on their giant land, whether that's land developers wanting to build fancy new uh, houses, McMansions, or whether that's uh, pressures, tribal pressures coming from traditional landowners and the Native Americans 
from the Indian reservation. This is quite a dense series. There's a lot of characters. There is a lot of political like motives and things going on. It's the kind of series where you really do have to pay attention. It is all about land rights and ownership and the struggles of power and greed and corruption, all that kind of thing. And Kevin Costner as John Dutton is this hardened man who's had to sacrifice everything in his life, including like his relationships with his children and everything like that in order to get to where he is today. So he is not about to give up without a fight. It's really interesting. Like I said, there's only two episodes that I've seen so far, but I am enjoying it a lot. Okay guys, there you have it. They are some brand new TV series that have just come out recently that I have begun to watch, have finished watching, or I'm going to continue watching very, very soon. In fact, I'm going to keep going with Yellowstone, the latest episode of Yellowstone right after we finish recording this video. Guys, like I said, there is so much, so much great television going on at the moment. So these have just been a few new series that I have discovered and could not wait to start sharing with you because like I mentioned earlier in this video, nobody I know in real life is watching the same shows that I'm watching at the same time. So I'm trying to spread the love as much as possible so I can have other people to talk to about all these shows. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Don't forget, you can also comment down below what other shows am I missing out on that I need to add to my list immediately. Please let me know. I'd just love to keep watching more great television. Peak TV, the word that was coined recently. And I am all about that because that is exactly what it feels like we are living through right now. <laughs> Guys, don't forget you can also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and keep up to date with all things movies and TV and I will see you very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.